Aris Alder here with my British alter ego. Let me know in the comments if you like this more than my previous videos. This video will quickly cover supplied air respirators and present an affordable option for using this system with 3D printing. If you enjoy disaster movies like Outbreak, then you have seen a supplied air respirator in action. This type of respirator provides a high level of protection against particulates, chemical fumes, smoke, and the occasional world-ending virus. The American agency OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, uses an index called Assigned Protection Factors, or APFs, to help employers select an appropriate respirator type for a given environment. The half-mask respirators from 3M have an average APF of 10, which means that on average one-tenth or 10% of contaminants penetrate. A full-mask respirator has an APF of 50, so only 2% contaminants penetrate. These use the same cartridges and can provide splash protection, but they are slightly more expensive and limit vision. A loose-fitting head cover, or hood, in a powered air purifying respirator or a supplied air respirator is assigned a default APF of 25 by OSHA, since these are not tight fitting, but in practice this rating is upwards of 1000. Tight fitting face pieces are automatically rated at an APF of 1000. A powered air purifying respirator uses a larger $150 cartridge and a small blower fan, while the supplied air respirator uses an airline. Both have a continuous flow of clean air, which allows for the level of protection that is up to 100 times more than a typical cartridge respirator. I will go over a few pros and cons between the different headpieces in a minute. A self-contained breathing apparatus is used in environments immediately dangerous to life, such as in firefighting. This system uses compressed breathable air and has an APF of 10,000. It would be overkill for any hobby application. Now an official 3M supplied air respirator setup can be quite expensive for use in a casual hobby. The most expensive component will be the air compressor required to supply up to 15 CFM at 90 PSI or 420 litres per minute at 620 kilopascals. This airflow rate and pressure is required for safe operation. The cheapest electric air compressors that can safely do this are above $2,000. You need to meet the airflow requirement while also avoiding gas and oil lubricated compressors. Gas compressors produce carbon monoxide and oil lubricated compressors vaporize oil, both of which enter the air supply. Non-oil lubricated compressors use Teflon components, so small particulates of PTFE will be generated. This and moisture collected in the system are two reasons why the compressed air must pass through a series of filters to produce clean breathing air, often specified as grade D air. Further selection of this type of system is out of scope for this video, but I will link a few examples below. Beyond the compressor and filters needed, the official 3M air hose is $500 for only 50 feet. The regulating valve is $260, and the breathing tube is yet another $100. Thus, the total can quickly approach $4,000. The bonuses of this system are reliability, certifiability, use with multiple people, delivering chilly air to the user through adiabatic cooling, and the use of compressed air for any number of other applications. However, there is a cheaper alternative to this that I have been testing and using successfully for dozens of hours of post-processing resin prints. A low-pressure supplied air respirator system retails for $1,000 to $3,000, but we can build one ourselves, and we'll start by picking a headpiece. The three main options to choose from are an economical polypropylene head cover, a robust plastic head cover, and a polypropylene hood. I recommend starting off with a polypropylene head cover, as it will be appropriate for most people and is affordable. 
The hard plastic head cover will offer physical protection and looks awesome, but it is also quite expensive. A hood is ideal if you have excess facial hair or want additional splash protection around your neck and chest. When determining to go with a small or large size, you will need to measure your head circumference. The average female is 55 centimeters and the average male is 57 centimeters, so most people will use a small size, but it is good to double check. We will be supplying air to the headpiece using thin plastic duct and a 4 inch inline blower fan that is 60 watts. If you must source a different model of fan, make sure it has at least 200 CFM at 50 watts. The fan manufacturers do not always list the static pressure, and we need the pressure to force the air into the headpiece. A 200 CFM at 20 watts would have significantly less pressure given fan affinity laws. The duct I am using is a 4 inch diameter, 4 mil thick polyethylene tubing. The smallest rolls of this tubing on Amazon are typically 500 feet for about $50, but you can buy a smaller quantity on McMaster if you don't want that much. I will link both in the description. It is possible to use vinyl duct for this, but the extra weight drags backwards on your head. The duct connects to the headpiece with a reducing adapter. The two halves of the adapter can be FDM printed and held together with a hose clamp over it and the tubing. I have also designed a spacer for mounting the duct onto the fan to help prevent tearing. Both STLs are linked below. The hose clamps can be any 4-inch variant, but I recommend ones with thumb screws for ease of use. The air compressor or fan that you use in this setup needs to be away from the contaminated environment to deliver clean air. The easiest way to do this is to set the fan outside. If this is not possible, then you can install additional duct to retrieve outdoor air. If you are inside a house and using a window to vent contaminants outside, then you need to use a different window for your intake, preferably one on a different side of the house. It is also a best practice to use a MERV-13 or HEPA filter on your air intake to purify the air you are delivering to your face. I am currently using a 6x6x1 by six by inch HEPA filter, which is affordable but has a lower surface area than alternatives. The filter sits in a reducing adapter right onto the fan. You could also 3D print a filter housing like this to connect your duct too. This system, by 4D filtration, is free to print yourself or you can buy components from them. Regardless of how you decide to structure your supplied air respirator setup, the one thing you must buy is a pulse oximeter. You need this to check your blood oxygen level during use. My level typically sits at 95 to 97 percent. When I wear the hood without any airflow, it has dropped as low as 93 percent, but with the airflow active, my level increases and sits at 96 to 99 percent. In summary, a supplied air respirator can improve your safety when working in a hazardous environment. While using compressed air and official equipment will be more reliable, it is possible to achieve reasonable results at a fraction of the price. The proposed system is not a replacement for any certified supplied air respirator. With any path you take, please stay safe when using a respirator like this. If your blood oxygen level drops, airflow stops, or you notice any physical body change during use, please stop using the system immediately. This is just the first video on this topic. I would love to provide improvements to this system based on your feedback. Thanks for watching, guys and gals. Aris Older out.